Hey, this is Steve from DSI, doing gear talk. So uh, here's my gear. Rocking on the um, the Pro Reference Pure kit. Black, uh, sounds amazing. Really punchy live, really uh, fantastic. Got a Tama metal snare here. I like the metal, it got more crack, and it's a 13 inch instead of a 14 inch. And it's uh, five and a half inches deep, so it's got it's got body, but it's also tight, you know, not quite as thin as a piccolo snare sounds. Well, the Proclet have had this uh, two or three years now, and uh, I tell you what, I work hard on making it look new and sound new, keep it shined in, and uh, keep the chrome good, because I think, like, if you keep it looking new, it'll sound new. New heads, keep them uh, in top uh, um, shape, you know, wipe them down, keep the sweat and grime off them so they resonate best. All right, well, over here is 10 inch. And I think it's an eight inch depth. And uh, you know, of course it's a good high pitch to begin with. In the middle is a 12. Um, and then it goes down to a 13 inch. It used to have a 14 uh, on the bottom, but it was so deep it interfered with positioning against the uh, kick drum because the kicks are 22 inch. Uh, two of those, both the same size, 22 by 20. One 16 inch floor tom. Uh, I used to have two floor toms also, and I had a, a, an eight inch tom also. I kind of ditched the extra toms years ago and went for more chinas. And I have noticed uh, four chinas, got them double stacked over here. Uh, and a smaller rod, 20 inch, but with a big belt. This way it's not taking up a whole lot of room back here, uh, interfering if I'm going to the floor tom or any toms matching over here. And I keep the two front ones up high. Basically they're all pasty alphas. Uh, just because they're made from metal and they're very tough. They can take a beating and they cut through all the noise of death metal It's you know really got a hack through there make it sound good a couple of smaller crashes on the ends For some uh, you know some accents and the fatter crashes in the middle for some body And a small little set of hi-hats They're heavy-duty, but they're oh these are 14. I had a pair of 13s. I was going with a while these are the 14s though They're nice and full and rattly and really do a good job over here, some axis pedals, doing the E-kits you see down there. And these particular pedals, I refurbished them and I've been rocking these for 15 years at least that I know of. Uh, solid pedal, I really do enjoy it. Got the uh, hi-hat attached, the bass drum attachment there. Keep just a little bit of a gap here on the, on the hi-hats. So it's sizzly, but not too wide open, so you still get some fast chops, you know, on the hats, so they really resonate there. Got it all rocking on the pearl rack. Everything is nice and, and steady on these things. You know what I mean? Nothing. If something, you know, it's just solid, and you need the reliability. So, that's all good. You're rocking that, nothing's falling apart. Well, you know, I had some kits early on. It was the early 90s and late 80s, but it was always a problem because of all the symbols and the hardware you need trying to fit the, the stands and the legs and positioning them around the bass drums and all this and it was such a hassle and it was also unsteady because everything if you do get it in place you start hitting on it and it's sliding away from you and the bass drum is sliding away as you're kicking it and all this nonsense so instead of nailing it down to a riser or whatever nonsense putting dead weight in the bass drum or paint cans or whatever people would use to, to hold the kit in place while you're bashing it and the rack really solved all those problems, especially this one. The heavy duty, the square pipe, uh, there's no slippage, uh, nothing's going anywhere. It really is a dream. Yeah, that's one of the best innovations I can think of in gear since I was playing is the rack. It just really solidifies the kit. It's solid. A hurricane couldn't blow it away. You know? So, stoked with that. And this kit sounds great, mic'd up, you know, get a good shot from the outside and check it out. I use house mics, but I have a nice set of mics at the house I've recorded with uh, Audex that I've, I've had those for a long time too. Got a good deal on them. And I demo with those. Uh, but you know, uh, we do a lot of house shows, so we just rely on their gear. This way mine doesn't get swiped or damaged. And you know, and usually everyone has the same mics, the uh, uh, little clip-on mics. I forget the name, but they're really great. Everyone seems to have them, so why bring mine? I know they do a lot of custom sticks for bands, and that's great, but I never really needed one. This is just the Rock, which is, I think, the 2B, something like that, roughly. 
vinyl tip, you know, so it pings off the ride nice. And it's just, you know, the perfect length, perfect weight. You know, it's sturdy, these never break. You chip away at them pretty good, but you know, they never break, never lost a tip. And you know, they allow you to hit hard while you're playing fast, there's still weight there to hit hard with. So it's a great stick, and they've been really good to me over the years. You see they do custom uh, the logo and a little uh, deicide stick action. So thank you to all my uh, gear providers, Pearl and Alesis and uh, Heisty and Vader and Axis. So thank you guys. And, couldn't do it without you. Isn't this one trigger unit, the Ulysses DM5? Uh, I run, you know, just the, like I said, the triggers, mic, everything else. Uh, just sample the kicks, that's it. Run the firing, and that's it. Keep it simple. Hey, everybody, it's Jack Owen from DSI. We're going to go over some gear, guitars, pickups, amps, processors, all that crap. Let's start with some Blackheart guitars out of, well, it was South Dakota, now it's uh, Virginia. So I've been with them for about four years. Uh, actually, I guess I'll go with the first one I got from them. It's an RA2. Neck through, mahogany body, rosewood. Um, I think it was green, but he painted it for me, painted it black. I still got the green dots. Um, I started with this because I've switched over to rail hammer pickups. Just something I saw online and I contacted uh, Joe Naylor. Totally cool guy. I said this is a great idea and he sent me a set to check out. So, awesome. He's got uh, obviously rails and then pull pieces for the high strings. Passive pickup with high output. Uh, great clarity. Uh, you can tell if you play like a major chord, you can just hear every note ringing out. Um, use Ernie Ball, uh, 10 to 42. I think I have a set, well I have a 7 string set as an emergency backup. So that's 10 to 56. Huh. That works out. I gotta pick up some more. Let's go pick, of course, the industry standard in tune. I always play the, uh, I don't always dig these up, the M3s with the sharp point, so when I called in tune, they were like, we got these, so I just did a, did various designs with them, that one says Dia Jack, just for fun, I've had like Jackie the Jew, I'm not Jewish, I don't know why, just a nickname, or, you know, I think that's like a, under a millimeter, that is a millimeter. It varies depending on you know what what you're doing, what you're playing. If you want to play harder or get a little more nuance to your playing. I was with Blackheart for a while, and he wanted to do a signature, so I set a single cutaway uh, to humbuckers. It came with EMGs, but I, like I said, I would probably switch it out to rail hammer. Obviously, a Floyd Rose for what we're doing. Um, toggle for, you know, standard toggle. Volume tone, no switching right now. It's cool to have, but you don't really need it for DFI. Um, this one has to be redone with the rail hammers, and I usually just do the pots and the output jack and the switch and everything. So it's a little crackly right now. So I'm sticking with the RA2 right now because it's totally redone and ready to go. Let's go to processors, line six. Um, I was using Digitech stuff forever and it just falls apart eventually and uh, they had a new artist rep that just basically wouldn't replace it, fix it or whatever so I just found that in a uh, music store somewhere on tour and it's pretty good, easily programmable stuff, everybody's familiar with Line 6. So. Uh, just got, I think, yeah, Line 6 insane. If you want heavy, that's and I really just have a heavily heavily gated rhythm, an open rhythm, and then a boost lead with I think unified and delay, and then a uh, boost lead channel. I think just delay. Yeah. Anything to be a little different. Uh, cables, no big deal. I'm not sure what these even are. I think monster. No. 
New trick. No endorsement. Just, you know, pick them up wherever. Cables, no big deal. All right, power. I've had a couple of these crate heads for about... Somebody asked me last night. It must be like 10 or 13 years. 10, 12. About 12. Uh, it was something crate made before they dissolved. A 350 watt solid state head. There are effects built in, which are pretty cool, but I'm really just using it for power. Just run the line six into the back, into the effect loop. Since it's 350 watts. Cool. Uh, nothing special on it. It's just output jacks. Uh, they actually don't sound terrible. Uh, straight in. So sometimes I do that, or usually just use the line six. Because there's no gate. Uh, let's go cabinets. Where's the logo? Crimson Cabinets. Um, Crimson Cabinets was started by Chad Pettit, who started Blackheart. So he hooked me up with a couple of these with the Oxblood mesh front and 75 watt Celestians. Nothing special, but they are solid. He's a big fan of Vader cabinets, so it's kind of a, a take on that. Um, I don't think they're stereo split, just the mono in. And there you have it, I think. Alright, this has been Steve and Jack from Deezide. Come check us out on tour. You can find tour dates, I think, on facebook.com slash official So come on out and check out the sound for yourself.